Uh, hello, internet. Uh, okay, um, my name is Ross Johnson, and I script doctored and directed the short film Pax Masculina, which was conceived of and produced by John Scamahorn. If you're watching this video, you know who he is. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about my specific experiences with that project and what led to my eventual separation from it. Uh, right now I think it's the women's stories are more important, they're more serious, and it's highly, it's, it's, it's highly effective. And in a way, like, it feels really good to watch somebody that you grew to uh, loathe and despise burn in a righteous fire. So that's I'm enjoying that part, and that's maybe that's selfish of me, but I am. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was something different, and what doesn't feel good is that this anger and this movement is being used to target somebody who is innocent. Uh, the director of the School of Drama, Tom Houston Orr, is not guilty or culpable for John Scamahorn's perverse behavior. Uh, to those people that are out there lashing out at Tom, I guess I have one question, which is, who's your enemy? Who's the, who's the real enemy? Is it John or is it Tom? Uh, someone who may have said something in class or outside of class that maybe hurt your feelings? Or is it somebody who flies to Thailand every year to fuck hookers? You know, some, somebody who uh, took pictures of students and cut the faces out of them and then, you know, pasted them onto uh, pornographic images. Uh, I never saw any pictures like that. John was always very careful in what he showed me, but uh, I believe they exist. Um, so I wanted to address four of the complaints that have come out against Tom in the past week. Uh, which is one, why wasn't John a donor more properly vetted by the School of Drama and allowed to be around students? Uh, two, the money, which I believe is around $35,000. And three, students and alumni that are mad or resentful towards Tom or about conversations or comments that they believe are inappropriate. And fourth and finally, uh, suppressed speech. So uh, the first one. Um, John was a professor emeritus of the engineering school, and I believe he was at the engineering school for around 20 years, I think. Uh, that type of person doesn't keep a position that long unless they're very good at hiding who they are, and also understands how to protect themselves legally. Uh, that's I, The evidence for that, I think, is uh, John has gone underground and he's lawyered up, and we just know that he has. Um, so, anyway. Before he was a School of Drama donor, he was also a musical theater donor, and if I'm remembering correctly, I think, I think he was involved with the Opera Guild. Um, so, John looked good on paper, and he had a good track record and it's understandable why the any of the fine art schools did not immediately recognize that John was a threat to students and I am I'm in 100 percent favor of having a vetting system in place uh, like a committee with the authority to do background checks and conduct interviews and and check references but we cannot blame an administrator for the failing of a system that has not been implemented. So the fault does not lie with any one individual. It's, uh, it's a crack in the apparatus, uh, the school, the system that needs to be patched. So, and I encourage you to do that. Do that. Um, you know, fix the system. 
but don't create a any more boogeymen. Uh, two, the money. Uh, yesterday, today is uh, Saturday, May 9th, 2018. So ye yesterday, Friday, the Oklahoman ra ran an article in print that said that all the funds were returned to John Scamahorn in 2016, uh, which was at the same time uh, that I quit working for John uh, because that was the first Title IX investigation that was started by a former student, a, a colleague, and a friend who I hold in the highest regard and I cannot commend enough. Um, but a year before that is when Tom started distancing himself from John because of the content uh, of his play, Inside the Mind, which was a shitty, shitty play. Uh, I, was, I was in it. It was an easy $2,000 to make. And for anyone that was wondering what the price of my art artistic integrity was, $2,000, apparently. Uh, the, in, the endowments and scholarships and, and incidentals money that was used to buy like fruit trays for opening night receptions and stuff like that was approximately like $35,000. And the School of Drama gave it back before this story broke. So when it comes to money and integrity with the administration and the professors uh, at in that department, uh, they have they have more more integrity than me, and that's all I'll say about that. Uh, third, uh, students and alumni that are mad at Tom Orr for conversations and comments that were made inside and outside the classroom. Um, look, I was in and out of that program for a long time, the better part of a decade. Probably the only people that have been there longer are the professors themselves. So I know these people, I've taken their classes, I've heard their words, and I understand who they are. And I also understand that theater runs the gamut of human experience. And sometimes that covers uncomfortable shit. Titus Andronicus' daughter gets raped, her tongue gets cut out, and both of her hands get cut off. Um, the Laramie Project is about a, a real-life hate killing of a, of a young gay man in Wyoming. Uh, and those are not pretty things to, to consider. Uh, they're extreme. They're, they're extremes. And so, I hate the word industry, but I, I can't think of a better one. Uh, but the industry requires a level of um, openness to be able to tackle and talk about such topics. And that openness is a psychological characteristic of people who are uh, attracted and successful in this discipline. So if Tom ever had a conversation or made a statement that made somebody uncomfortable or mad, it's the responsibility of the individual to establish those boundaries. This, this specific uh, criticism particularly irks uh, me because it's an attack on someone's personality and you can't expect everyone to have the same kind of filters and uh, that you do. So all that Tom is guilty of is trying to form bonds with students that he finds meaningful. And I understand that his candor can be a little off-putting to some people, but candor is not criminal. Uh, four suppressed speech. The bureaucratic apparatus that 
the bureaucratic apparatus of the university serves the self-interest of the university and there is a legal arm of the university that keeps professors and administrators from speaking out in cases where they see injustice uh, because the university does not want to be held liable or responsible. So when it comes to suppressed speech, I believe that more of that pressure is felt by the people whose lives and jobs are at stake. And Tom repeatedly said, do not work with the donors. And I was told that, and I didn't listen. Uh, because I was greedy, ambitious, and I thought I could make something that people could be proud of. All I would, all I had to do was keep the monster in his cage. Uh, I haven't spoken out against John Scamahorn because I was afraid of the, the legal ramifications. Like I could, I couldn't, aff I can't now, and I couldn't then afford a legal ba battle. And uh, I don't have the status or position or uh, family that Tom has. And he tried to warn us and did warn us as much as he could legally, ev even when he had, you know, more at stake. So we can't. The fault lies with the system, not with the individual. And so I would, I just, I deeply encourage everybody that is speaking out against the school of drama, I just encourage you to really ask yourselves who's the real enemy. Thank you.